Hi, my name is Ashley Stewart and I'm presenting on engagement with primary mental health care following prison release among men with dual diagnosis. Disclosures for this study are outlined here. People in prison experience disproportionate rates of mental illness. Approximately 50% of people in prison report a mental illness diagnosis and 27% are prescribed medication for a mental illness. The prison release period is a time of heightened stress and poor health and social outcomes, often characterised by an acute rise in risk of death, psychological distress and resumption of substance use. People are also seeking housing and employment and reconnecting with family and social networks. Therefore, understanding the mental health trajectories of people leaving prison is of importance, particularly those with dual diagnosis. In the community, the role of primary health care in mental health is well recognised, with GPs providing mental health care to approximately 75% of those seeking help. GPs have an essential role in the continuing care of people who have a mental illness, particularly during periods of heightened stress, such as reintegrating from prison to the community. So given that, the aim of this study is to describe primary mental health care presentations within three months of any prison release between March 2014 and October 2016 from the Prison and Transition Health Cohort Study. The PASS study is a prospective cohort study of men leaving prison who report histories of recent regular injecting drug use. The study involved baseline and up to three follow-up interviews along with extensive record linkage. For this study, primary healthcare data come from the Medicare Benefit Schedule, Mental health diagnoses come from the Victorian Statewide Public Mental Health Database and imprisonment episodes from Corrections Victoria. Of the 400 PATH participants, 335 were included in this study. The mean age was 36 years. Most were born in Australia. Almost half completed less than 10 years of education and three quarters reported three or more episodes of adult incarceration. In the three months following any prison release, there were 4,009 primary care episodes. 73% were professional attendances. 13% were specified mental health treatment presentations and were provided to 157 participants. Figure one displays the distribution of all primary care presentations per person with a median of six, while figure two displays the distribution of all mental health primary care presentations per person with a median of two. 53% of participants included in this study had a previous mental illness diagnosis and accounted for 58% of all primary care episodes. Of all mental health treatment episodes, just over half were provided to people with a previous mental illness. Despite the significant mental health morbidity among this sample, there was limited access to targeted high level primary mental health care following prison release, regardless of past mental illness diagnosis. Finally, research is required to understand the barriers to accessing primary mental health care among this group, while future work is planned in exploring the incidence of primary care compared to tertiary care presentations for mental health. My acknowledgements are available here. My references 